hello all in this video we will see how a member function uh, and call stacks uh, works in uh, java a class can have methods it can get parameters from the callers and also return data however it is not always uh, needed that means um, we can write a function with uh, a return type of void and a method is not required to receive any parameter from the caller Each method manages its own uh, call stack. So, uh, if there are uh, two methods, say for example, uh, static void main calls a method A, then void main and method A both will have its own uh, call stack frame. And this call stack frame gets released once the method returns. For example, uh, the static void main is a program entry point. So if we declare some variable inside that static void main, those get allocated inside the stack frame uh, associated to static void main. Once the function returns, that means the program ends, the call stack associated to static void main get released. So the method parameters, local variables, all get allocated into the stack frame associated to the uh, method. So in this example, uh, we will see how primitive types are allocated in the stack frame and how it will get released. So when we talk about the stack frame, uh, all local variables for a function will get allocated inside the stack frame. Also, method parameters also get allocated in the stack frame. Let us see this uh, with an example. Here, if you see, there are uh, two variables uh, var1 and var2 inside the function called uh, some function. var1 is uh, initialized to 10 then here we call a function called one more function and we pass the variable var1 to this function so before calling the function we have some more print line statement and after calling function we have some print line statement which prints the local variables Here is uh, one more uh, function. This is called by the sum function, which we saw previously. Here we declared a variable var2 and we initialized it to 2. After that, uh, we are assigning the var2 uh, by summing up its content with a value in 1. I mean with a value in y. The y is coming here as a parameter. After that, we return the variable var2 to the caller. Let us see how call stack is involved on the function calls. So here you are seeing a static void bind and from static void bind we are creating a object for uh, method params then we are making call to some function. Actually the some function is a member function of method params and we are passing a constant value to this uh, some function as a parameter value. Here is the some function uh, implementation. We already saw this. Uh, it makes a call to one more function. This also we already saw. Here the yellow line states that uh, where we are staying. That means the execution stays 
at the specific location. In void main we are at stump function. Then in some function we are making call to one more function and in one more function our execution states at the return statement of where to. So now let us see how the call stack look for this uh, uh, I mean for, for, for the current stage let us see how the call stack looks. So the main function is at the bottom of the call stack on top of that some function stays and on top of that one more function stays so in main function you can see the val is initialized to 10 and this is we call this as a stack frame also associated to main obj also stays here i mean the reference to obj stays here but the actual heap allocates the memory for uh, method params but reference to that heap stays here in the main function in some function we can see where one is initialized to 10 then where to is not yet uh, initialized because uh, after the method call we will get a value into where to so one more function stays on top of all other uh, function here where to is initialized to 15 so once we return from uh, one more function um, the stack frame for uh, one more function will get wiped out that means the stack frame that you are seeing in the top uh, will get released then once we return from some function we call stack frame for some function get released and so on one more thing if you see at present we are staying at return where to the last statement in the one more function so even though all the three stack frames are alive here in one more function context we cannot get access to um, variable local to some function or the variable which stays in some function stack frame and we cannot get the content which stays in the stack frame of our main function so when we are in one more function stack frame uh, the content of that stack frame only visible inside that uh, function also if you see in one more function we have shown here where to only actually the parameter also get a slot in the call stack frame for example in one more function we will get a slot for y similarly for uh, some function we will get a slot for x Okay, let us see this uh, uh, in Eclipse and how it works. Here in Eclipse, uh, uh, we have uh, two files. Uh, one is example of Java and another one is method parameter Java. In example, we have a static void main and in method parameter we have uh, Two member function, one is a sum function, and another one is a one power function. So we have a breakpoint here. Uh, let's uh, execute this. If you see here at present, uh, uh, the call stack is at main and I am getting inside this ok, I will execute it again Here, if you see, there are uh, two call stack. I'm stepping inside. Okay. So this is the snapshot you saw in the slide. Here you see there are uh, 
three calls stack uh, at the bottom uh, we are seeing the static call when after that the main calls or some function and then from some function we are making call to one more function right so if we go to variable window we are seeing the stack frame for the topmost function and if i click here we can see the content for uh, some function we can see here where one is 10 where two is uh, not it uh, that is initialized to zero this is uh, not shown in the example uh, if we doesn't have equal to zero then where two is uh, uninitialized here since where two is zero now it is showing also you can notice that the parameter x will get a slat in the call start frame so now um, let's go to where we are staying here where to I double click here you can see the content for uh, call stack uh, frame for uh, wide main also now we will return from one more function since we are staying at here now since we can come out of that function you can see that uh, uh, call stack get reduced that means uh, the topmost call stack for uh, one more function is uh, wiped out and the variable content where to also get wiped out so now we are at uh, some function if you see when we made a call from main to this particular function we pass the content at 10 and that is passed as parameter that means a copy occurred from main to um, stack frame for uh, some function the 10 will get copied to x similarly when we made a call to one more function the content of where one from a stack frame of a some function is copied to one more function y all right now we are returning that means before this get wiped out the content of where two is copied from one more function to some function that means from uh, the content of where to is copied to uh, content of where to in uh, some function. So now we returned from that uh, some more function and uh, I mean uh, returned from uh, some function. So we are seeing only one call stack frame. So this is the output here. Uh, if you see here in terms of uh, primitive types the contents are copied that means we are here we are passing it as a parameter so the content of 10 will get copied to uh, some function so here when we make a call to one more function the content of where one is uh, copied to y when we return where to is copied to where i mean the where to in uh, one more function context get copied to some function context of where to so that's all here uh, thanks for watching if you like the video series uh, subscribe it thanks again bye